Let's go. All I do is work harder. All I do is work harder, yeah. Plus, I love it smarter. To take myself all the air. Come on, marching orders. Reach my goal. Hey guys, Todd Fossey here. I am the founder and chief instructor of Integrative Defense Strategies, also known as IDS. This is a CERT training pistol. This is a UTM conversion kit. This is a Gen 4 Glock 17. And this is a drill I call the Twin Cities Drill. Why do I call it that? Well, there are two targets involved in this drill, simulating two attackers. IDS is near the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota. And sometimes I just come up with random names for drills. Oh, and two thirds of this video takes place at IDS headquarters. All right, so let's break down the drill. This setup simulates circumstances and makes the assumption that I'm reasonably in immediate fear of death or great bodily harm and I have no choice but to defend myself with my handgun against two aggressors, showing intent with perhaps an edged weapon or an impact weapon. Probably an armed robbery or an attempt to force me to a secondary location. By the way, there's a 56% chance of dealing with more than one aggressor in a real world critical incident. An edged weapon and impact weapons are among the most common types of aggravated assaults. We like to build our training on real data as much as possible. Anyway, you can see here I have my hands up in what's known as the fence position. This is important to practice for several reasons. It's a great defensive position to block various striking attacks, and it's a good frame to counter takedowns and clinch attacks. Notice how I have my chin tucked behind my shoulders. This also helps protect my knockout pocket from punches or attacks to my neck with an edge weapon. The fence position is also a great non-verbal communication to aggressors and witnesses that I'm an unwilling participant in the interaction. In a scenario or real world encounter, I would be employing some sort of verbal disengagement here. The drill also makes the assumption that I don't have a reasonable means of retreat. And the fence position also helps to lull the aggressor as I feign compliance delay and obscure my defense until just the right moment. From here I use an open hand switch jab. The switch jab is most commonly used in Muay Thai kickboxing, but I've borrowed it for this specific context. Why an open hand? Well, I'm carrying a handgun that I'm about to transition to, and the open hand strike creates a lower probability of breaking my hand, which I prefer to have working to handle and manipulate a weapon. The switch jab is optimal here for various reasons. The kinetic chain of moving my back foot and my front hand at the same time allows me to generate a lot of immediate power without shifting my weight or telegraphing my defense. It also creates an angle and momentum for transitioning offline and circle behind my aggressor, buying me the time, distance, and position I need to transition to my weapon. You can see here I pull into a version of a deep retention shooting position from concealment. I prefer to use this position inside of about 3 feet, where I practice firing a controlled pair at quarter second splits. I pause for a brief moment to see if I've stopped the most immediate threat, then follow through with 3 more rounds in the center of mass from a compressed high ready position, again at quarter second splits. I prefer the retention and versatility of this position at about 6 feet. For the purposes of practice, I set up my first magazine to run dry after 5 rounds, so I can rehearse the slide lock reload, then transition to a secondary target, firing 3 to 5 more rounds in the center of mass at full presentation. I prefer to not work from a full presentation any closer than about 9 feet. Then I finish with a search and assess, breaking neurological lock, and scanning for any additional threats or relevant intel before I holster my weapon. Today, I don't have any training partners. If I did, 
I would do this exercise with them as a controlled scenario using CERT or UTM. Then I would go to the range to validate with a live weapon versus targets. The idea is to be as specific as possible to high probability circumstances that I may be faced with in reality. It's not about being good at a drill. It's about how the skills will transfer to reality. Integration of simple and effective combatives combined with the handgun and the four principles of winning the fight, which are 1. Distance management 2. Timing 3. Transitions and 4. Dominant angles This is how we like our drills. Compound, integrated, and dynamic. Simulating high probability real world variables and maximizing transference of skills. If you guys found this breakdown to be helpful, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. It really helps this channel and the Citizen Defender movement. If you're interested in innovative training you can do anywhere, please check out our website at www.idscitizendefender.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Let's go.